We live in a divided world, and yet we're the instruments of the heart of God. We're the ones who are called to choose to build bridges of relationship in places, structures, attitudes, and experiences of difference. We are not called to remain in polarity, but to live from the unity of knowing that each one of us has the possibility of prophet or persecutor. We're called to build bridges of relationship between and among people of difference. As a religious of the Sacred Heart, I live into and in our charism to discover and reveal God's love in the heart of the world and in the heart of humanity. It is to discover the Paschal mystery through both the suffering and the incarnation, to know that all are one. As I sat with today's readings, which seem to create the image of the dualism of polarity, an image from my own life emerged. My parents were married for 66 years, blissful and wonderful on one hand, but very real and difficult on the other, raising five children in the midst of economic insecurity. My father's years in the Navy, followed by a corporate career and 17 geographical transfers, He had his whole life mapped out with her and expected that he would go before. But unfortunately, my mother died first and he was left with a broken heart. And um, their experience of love had some important rituals in it. And one of them was that every night at 10 p.m., they broke bread together and talked about their day, literally to um, keep my father's blood sugar from spiking in the night, they had toast at 10 p.m. So a couple weeks after my mother died, I went back to be with my father and it came to be 10 p.m. And I said, okay, I'll go make toast now. And he looked at me with defiance and said, no, no toast. And I thought it was because his heart was wide open with grief. And so I said, oh, that's because you did it with mom. And he shook his head again with defiance and said, no, I hate toast. I said to him, for 66 years, every night at 10 p.m., you had toast. Why didn't you ever say anything? And he looked at me with both a sparkle and a mist and said, I ate toast because your mother loved toast. Hmm to eat toast. Sometimes I think we make the toast for another, and sometimes I think we eat the toast. Most of all, it leads us to that heart of God where we step outside the ego of self and what is easy or comfortable, what seems like the way that might achieve grandeur or success, and instead we listen deeply to how it is that we are called to be the bridge builders, the toast makers, We hear today something that seems like polarity in our readings, the path that Jeremiah illuminates between the barren and the fertile, or as Paul separates the believers in the resurrection and the unenlightened, or the psalmist who illustrates the way of the wicked and the prosperity of the one planted near running streams. When I listen to these words and images, it's not hard for me to know where I want to be. And yet, as I approach 25 years of sitting at 12-step recovery meetings three times a week, I stand in the midst of the plains with Luke, and I listen to the words. And I know that my journey has been one where I have stood on both sides, both the blessed builders and the woe-warned. I've been among the persecuted and the prophetic. I've stood as the one who has judged, and I have been judged in need of compassion and forgiveness in the experience of being human. I have stood in the midst of those whose commitment to Catholic social teaching leads to presence in places of active protest and public witness, and I have seen compassion and right action from those with whom I stand in opposition and judge as in need of woe-worn. Each of us, I believe, at some moment in our lives can find ourselves among the wheat and the chaff. At some moments, we feel ourselves a barren bush and at other times a tree planted beside the stream. Many of us, I suspect, if not all of us, find ourselves as those who are blessed as and those who receive the woe warning as we hear the gospel today. 
Not one of us is given a lifetime admittance to those who make the dream of God come true. Today, we're issued both an invitation and a choice. God leaves us free to look within our heart and see what love calls us to do and where our feet take us. Do we nourish the soil on which we're planted by keeping our eyes open, our hearts wide open, and our hands outstretched? Our past history, our giving record, the social action that we took yesterday does not exempt us from the discerning heart that requires our insides and our outsides match today. I'm challenged again in this day to make my life the gospel that can be read by another, to make visible the vision of Jesus and the tools he left us. When, I muse, was the last time that I washed the feet of the woe-warned or allowed my own heart to be cleansed? When our eyes are open to the needs of the person next to us, when we can see the inequality promulgated by silence, then we know the dream of God, the kingdom of God in our midst, and what it requires of us today. In our midst is the invitation and the call to make room at the table for both the blessed bringers and the woe-warned, where each of us makes room for the other, I for you, and you for me, no matter what category we place the other, so that we might hope again that the dream of God is our dream, a dream where we will each have the choice to make the toast or to eat the toast of love, to be the bread of life with and for one another. What does love ask of us this day?